while I was on a movie spree, I was on a question. What is a film education in India like? Is there a national institute for film education? How hard is it to get a job in the film industry with a film degree? Good morning to one and all present here. My name is Alia and my thesis topic is Film Institute at Chitranjali Studios, Kerala. And in my thesis, I intend to explore the world of film education. Now, in order to study about film education, first we need to know what the film industry is like. In a global context, the film industry is one of the most economically thriving industries. And according to the European Audiovisual Observatory, India holds the number one position for the most released films over the past four years. And India releases over three times more films than the United States. Even though Bollywood is a leading industry in India, according to a study done by the Federation of Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Media and Entertainment Report of 2019, there has been over a 10% increase in regional films, especially Malayalam, Kannada, Bengali, and Odia. The film industry also has an impact in tourism department. Research has shown that film works as virtual brochures and offer a very subtle way of marketing touristic campaigns. This graph shows the tourist arrivals of Leh before and after the release of Three Idiots. When you compare the timeline of Indian firms and their correlation with the educational institutions, we can see Indian film this was released in the year 1930, and it was oh, and it was only after 15 years did the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting decide to set up a film and television institute in Pune. In 2000s, India got nominated for Oscars and gained some international presence in the film industry. But the current scenario with India dominating the number of releases and very little international presence, now there's a dire need for better quality in films and hence we need better quality in education of films. When you compare the industry and the number of educated people within the industry, more than 75% of the people are not formally trained or educated in films. Despite having an 18% of world population and 12% of the economy, the Indian media and entertainment industry holds less than 2% of the world media and entertainment industry. The Indian media industry as a whole lacks a sufficient world-class facility to enable professionalism and the best practices. When I studied about the film schools in India, all the main film schools were located in the north of India and one government college in the south isn't working properly. Not only that, there is this huge gap between in the way students are taught versus the practical application in real life. And most importantly, even if you are a very talented student, it's very hard to get in the field without having any kind of connections. Education is increasing, and this has led to the increasing number of small scale schools which offer film studies. But over the time, the quality of these education is not up to the bar. And in order for a student to actually get good quality education, they have to migrate from South India to North India. What about a film school in Kerala? From the above studies, We've seen a rise in regional films, especially in the Malayalam sector. And Kerala already has a film culture and it, they host international film festivals each and every year. So what about a film school in Trivandrum? Trivandrum is the educational hub of Kerala, of the state, and is home to major film festivals like IFFK. In order to build a film school, you need to have an availability of land. And Chitranjali Studios has over 85 acres of land and, is support, and has supporting facilities like studios and offices. And most importantly, if an institute is proposed in Chitranjali Studios, there will be an increase and decrease of technical gap between the learning and the practical application. And additionally, Chitranjali Studios can bring in an organic growth since there's already an existing studio inside the inside the site. Chitanjali, one of the main major scopes of Chitanjali Studios is it offers a lot of networking. It can offer a lot of networking opportunities where students can closely work with professionals.
and not only that it can give the students a better exposure to real practice and this can also enable the people to reach out to the community and make general public interested in films and filmmaking coming to my proposal the main intent of my project is to bridge the gap between the theory and practice of filmmaking and thereby improving the film industry in terms of creative thinking and technical knowledge the main aim is to design a film institute incorporating the students as well as the society to build on a film culture which utilizes the potential of the city my main objectives are to make chitranjee studios the most sought after film institute by improvement of infrastructure to add physical infrastructure to make it a proper educational campus and to develop chitranjee studios into entertainment hub for public entertainment along with practical training now coming to my case studies i have taken these case studies um for a few reasons the The first case study is Cantana Film Institute in Thailand. Uh, this project is relevant to the study because it has spaces which gives the student an open environment to learn in. And uh, second one is Visual Art Campus in Rota. This was done to study about our campus planning, and this is a very fairly new campus, and it is a planned campus. And um, this campus encourages multidisciplinary interactions uh, by giving a common space. Next is Film and uh, Television Institute in Pune, the first government institute um, in India, uh, and you can study about the relationship between the students of different departments. And spatial studies were all also conducted. Uh, next is Whistling Woods in Mumbai. This is also a fairly new campus, and I study there to find out. the culture of the students and the spatial qualities and after i studied all of them uh, i did a comparative analysis of the institute with the following parameters uh, the first is zo site zoning the open spaces which they have given the site circulation and then i went to the interior quality of spaces uh, like shooting areas editing studios admin areas uh, and from all of these case studies these are the main takeaways and inferences that i've uh, that i've taken first is security ideally for a campus to be planned uh, for security reasons it will be good to give one entry and one exit for surveillance uh, pre production is uh, the brains for making the film so creating a breathable space is important um, outdoor spaces is a must for shooting area so you need to have a lot of land um, the next is uh, the students need a place to exchange ideas so meeting rooms and open spaces and flexible spaces must be given uh, while designing there should be a space for service entry ideally when it is next to a shooting area uh, next is a variety of outdoor spaces for different shooting locations and uh, inside a film studio there should be adequate storage uh there should be a visual connection um, for the vocal booth and the live room editing rooms must be fully uh, acoustic have, must have proper acoustics and uh, after the case study i have analyzed the programs of all the institutes and made a program analysis um there are primarily three courses uh, in the uh, like three year courses in the ug wing uh the post graduate wing has two year courses and then there are a lot of short programs as well so uh in the ug sector has um the direction of screenplay uh, cinematography acting sound design uh, art direction editing and animation the post graduate courses have um directing and producing film me uh, media and studies and film production and short courses are foundation courses in fiction writing foundation courses in screen acting and foundation courses in digital photography After conducting the case studies, I've actually made a area programming. Uh, I've divided into all the spaces that are that I'm planning to give, from admin blocks to pre-productions. Um, I have given uh, made the area sequence. These are the total build-up areas uh, that I've done. Next is. Uh, my site analysis uh, so i'll give you an introduction about the site 
the film institute of chitranjali studios is a government proposal and the main aim is to make chitranjali studios as important as it once was the idea of incorporating a film institute into this project is feasible in the sense due to the presence of various film institutes and uh, already existing activities present inside the site so the location is at thiruvallam trivandrum the site area is 787 acres uh, and the client details are it is a private partnership with ksf tc now the site zoning the site actually has uh, existing facilities like the shooting floors recording theaters offices and a lab and there's also a proposal for a center for development and image technology uh the site also has a lot of vegetation and it is a highly contoured site um the climate analysis is it's uh, hot and humid and there are two primary seasons in trivandrum like summer and monsoon and um you should in in order to create a space that is um in order to in order to create a habitable space adequate amount of ventilation must be taken care of and adding courtyards can help in cross ventilation and stack effect and also you can play with roofs um in these are the next is the vegetation as you can see the dark green areas are the highly vegetated areas uh, with and the light green light green areas have less vegetation but it's still fairly vegetated um the highly vegetated areas are actually in the steep areas and these trees can actually be used as shadings and can bring in diffuse lights these are the places where i took sections from and these are all the sections of the site so you can see the site topography since it is a contoured site i did a, a slope analysis and then i found out the buildable areas the ones in light blue are the buildable areas and that is where um, proposed buildings can be put uh, the highest uh, point of the contour is actually at 66 meters above the sky level and the lowest point is 33 meters above the sea level and the contour difference is 2 meters um these are the views to the vegetation and these are the views to the these are the views from the site next is the views and drainage map so these are the spots where you can see a lot of great view from to the arabian sea, uh, sea. and um, the two highest points of the site are focused on thick vegetation and the sea now the inference of the entire site analysis is uh, based on the road network you, you can actually uh split the area into public area semi public area and private area and um you can and film school can actually be built in close proximity to the existing facilities uh i've also done a swot analysis and um, the one of the strength is you can take advantage of the good view and the site is elevated and has um view towards the see and the nh road it is highly vegetated and it is a contoured site so you can use a uh, levels as well there's a sea breeze so it can keep the place cool and it is pedestrian friendly as well weakness is the site is 7 km away from the city and the construction and construction of 15 meters is not allowed uh the opportunities is shading issues can be naturally solved as there's enough trees within the site um one of the threat is evacuating nearby landmass can actually make the site vulnerable and can lead to like landslides and runoff soil runoff i have also mapped all of them in in the site so it will be easier it will be legible now coming to my concept my design formulation came about me asking these following questions can a film school bring about a interaction between professionals and students can architecture help in breaking the wide gap between the film education and how can we bring about curiosity from the general public about films there is already an existing museum inside the uh, site but it is very small and in order to bring in awareness what if we integrate the museum with additional auditorium so it can actually act as a venue for iffks and other venues 
how I came to my main concept is actually by studying the stages of filmmaking. So there are actually three main stages uh, stages of filmmaking. First is pre-production, production, and post-production. Uh, and if I if we you know, come by combining all the stages of filmmaking and juxtaposing the tangible and intangible elements of filmmaking to create a film score, basically creating a film score like a montage sequence and also creating a narrative through the sequence of frames. Uh, the basic site zoning is done by the following basis. First is based on the views and vegetation. Next is done on the basis of, uh, my buildings are zoned on the basis of public, semi-public and private. Um, the, in public uh, areas, museums and auditoriums can be zoned. In semi-public area, it has exist, um, uh, educational institutions can be zoned and private areas are where hostels can be zoned. Next is on the basis of existing road facilities and the adjacency of um, the actual facilities. Uh, the road can be actually taken from the contours and uh, if we propose a film institute next to the existing facilities, it will be more easier for them to interact. Next is based on buildable area. I found out where all we can build all the structures. These are the design parameters that I've used and these design parameters are actually taken from elements of filmmaking as well. First is in filmmaking, we use light and sound as matter. So my building orientation is actually done in such a way that all the buildings get enough wind and uses tunnel effect and all the buildings are cross-shaded. And uh, I've given uh, water bodies along the wind path to create evaporative cooling. Secondly, creating an introspective domain. So creative people actually need a lot of space where they can sit and relax. Even though they're highly social people, they need places where they can introspect and create new ideas so uh, by creating rooftop as ga roof gardens they can it can give them a very introverted space for themselves and not only that it can also act as a different dimension for viewing a space and it can create like a three-dimensional outlook for a shooting space and uh, roof gardens can also reduce the urban heat island effect and making the surroundings much cooler Next is the exchange of domain. By integrating the studio inside a film school, it can bring in more collaboration and exchange of ideas from the professionals and students and can bring in more diversity in the film and the field of cinema. Uh, also, I've created a main access. Given primary accesses, main primary accesses, so and the in point of interaction actually becomes the place where uh, students and professionals, everybody can come and gather and discuss exchange of ideas. Um, then finally is the layering of space or montage sequence. The arrangement of space in, like, is like uh, the same process of filmmaking only uh, using pre-production, production and post-production. So it is zoned according to the process of filmmaking. This is my site plan. I have one main entry and one service entry. Uh, these are the spaces that I have provided. Museum, parking, admin, pre-production, uh, production, uh, the shoot, pre -pro uh, production for shooting floors, uh, canteen, auditorium, and gym, gym post-production, hostel blocks, and open space, uh, open flexible area. The open flexible area and um, the canteen auditorium, gym, and the library acts as a core main core area. Uh, and um, there's also a visual connectivity from the museum to the visual um, access areas. And uh, the buildings, uh, all the buildings, um, all the four buildings acts as like a small frame uh, to corner the core area. So it creates a sense of curiosity from the viewer. And then once you once a person is diverted to the core area, it opens up to uh, varies of open space, varieties of open spaces. This is a montage sequence I was talking about.
the Monta sequence was to instill a sense of visual connectivity and to give a flow of spaces. Um, so the first one is when you enter the the site, the first thing that you see is a slowly emerging museum. And then once you start going there, uh, slowly, slowly it starts revealing the uh, Film Institute. And uh, once you start walking in the direction of the Film Institute, it you get diverted to the core area. Uh, and from the core area, you get, diverted, uh, you get diverted back to the Institute and different, different spaces inside the core area. The used is uh, first is Ashoka trees. Ashoka trees is really good for oxygen, producing oxygen and all the rest of the other trees like Bahinia tree, the Indian lap, lapaburn, the flame of forest, um, Roystonia Royce, regia and Indian uh, cirrus. All of them are flowering plants. So flowering plants, um, the main reason why I chose flowering trees is a uh, because of its seasonal change. Uh, so the entire site will go through a dynamic change seasonally. And this can also act as like different, different um, shooting locations for the students. Uh, this is the detail of the core area. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the section of my site. Uh, this is the museum, these are the pavilions leading to the institution, uh, and this is the institution and the core area and the hostel blocks. Now coming to my individual plans, uh, all of the plans are um, the shape of the the building pad is uh, because it may, is to in, uh, mimic the topography of the uh, contoured land uh, and the ground floor as I said it, it a ground floor is supposed to create curiosity within the Coming to my individual plans, uh, all of the plans are um, the shape of the the building pad is uh, because it may, is to Im uh, mimic the topography of the uh, contoured land uh, and the ground floor, as I said, it, it, a ground floor is supposed to create curiosity within the uh, within the students and the professionals and the public setting. So all the ground floor areas are filled with public amenities such as um, boardrooms and teachers, uh, confer um, te professors' rooms, etc. And gathering spaces. And uh, this is the plan for the admin pre-production and production uh, of a uh, classrooms and shooting area. Uh, so the zoning is uh, mainly based on the previous thing that I said, and uh, not only that, it follows a main axis, and then there are there are uh, secondary accesses as well. Um, there's in there's connections between two buildings, and um, they uh, they're very they're interrelated as well. Uh, so uh, in a vertical zoning, there's um, the relationship between admin and the pre-production block is the ground floor remains as a public realm and the first floor becomes like classrooms and VIP discussion areas. Uh, the relationship between pre-production and the shooting floor is the, uh, the ground floor, the basement level becomes like this workshop areas and shooting areas and in the pre-production block are given like studios and um, workshop areas and um, the uh, first floor is filled with classrooms and all of them are connected by uh, bridges and these bridges act as like not just like vertical connectivity but also as like different viewing angles for uh, for the school. Uh, the main, the master relationship between the shooting floor uh, is to actually create a same skyline. Uh, the shooting floor is, suppo is uh, supposed to be 15 meters, but in order, for me, in order to create the same uh, skyline, the building is dipped to minus four meter level. And um, that four meter level, uh, at that area for the pre-production block also becomes like the studio space for 
the students so it becomes like it has like this um synergic relationship um the next is the relationship between the production and the shooting floor so oh, and all the the meeting areas are have flexible spaces meaning that they can be uh, made big or small uh, these are like uh, this is a section of my uh, building and this is the se section of the meeting room like, this is the detail of the meeting room uh, this is the uh, detail of the uh, facade so uh, the walls are actually um, offset it inwards by uh, three meters and uh, 1.5 meters is actually a walkway and then the rest is actually uh, filled with green uh, green um, greens and a trellis so this trellis also has like uh, the plantings are mostly like curtain creepers and flowering plants again it acts as, act, acts as a has a dynamic facade and brings in a diffuse light. The flooring that I've used is polished concrete on all the uh, corridors and carpet tiles for meeting areas and classrooms. This is a material palette, the brick and uh, polished concrete, and ceramic tiles is used for the toilet and heavy duty tiles for shooting floors. This is the first floor plan. Um, so, classrooms are of different sizes because uh, there are different, different. Uh, strength of each um, department and uh, if it's for individual students they can like have a classroom of their own or something like that or a group meeting uh, again the first floor is connected by bridges and and they have meeting areas so that they can discuss what whatever they have learned this is a section and this is the elevation uh, this is the view and this is a view from the connecting bridge uh, this is the basement plan uh, of the pre-production shooting area. Of the pre-production shooting areas, uh, as you can see, there are uh, workshops and studios, and uh, this is the interrelationship between all of them. This is the is ground floor plan of uh, the canteen. auditorium or library and the post-production block the post-production block is zoned next to the existing facilities and um, there's a change in post-production block uh, layout uh, the ground floor is actually filled with editing studios so if there is like a need for the students and the professionals to come and do something and help out they can easily do that uh, all the rest follows the have all the press will have like meeting rooms and open spaces the auditorium has like two types of auditorium one is a preview theater and one is a big auditorium so smaller auditorium is used for um, smaller kind of events and big auditoriums for big events so in uh, in the auditorium building itself there's a gymnasium and um, the canteen is actually for uh, for the entire like uh, hostel as well this is a section of the plan uh, next is the first uh, first floor of first floor uh, plan the f uh, uh, the first floor of the auditorium is a gymnasium and um, the canteen is fully a canteen and it's all connected by bridges. This is a section of the auditorium and this is the detail of the fixtures in the uh, acoustic fixtures. This is the hostel block. It has warden's area, um, media room, toilets and bedrooms. The bedrooms are for two people. Um, this is a section of the hostel and we follow the same design as the film institute this is the museum block as you can see there's two parts of it one is the auditorium part and one is the museum part so uh, on top of the museum there's actually meeting areas and uh, office spaces this is a section of it 
now coming to my special topic my special topic is a recording studio this is a proximity chart that i have made from all the inferences uh, i have given a control room live room a waiting room this waiting room actually acts as a sound log and there is a server room and a machine room uh, the um, uh, the doors for control room and live room are acoustic doors um, and uh, there's a lot um, uh, i've given lf traps and acoustic panels and resonators as acoustic treatments and this is a flooring layout the flooring layout is engineered wood and carpet tiles uh, this is the section of the special topic and uh, of the recording studio and uh, these are the details of it